Hello everyone, Larry Satchwell here. Today's project, I'm gonna make a set of shelves out of the quarter panel of this old door. I'm gonna be using that and some step treads. I already made a couple of shelves out of this door about 20 years ago, we remodeled. And in, in doing that, we gained some, these two doors. Our house was built in the 1930s. So it's very likely that some of this paint has lead in it. And I don't even remember having tested for it on those last shelves. But these shelves are, uh, are a little more uh, abused, should I say, than they were. They've got some paint coming off of them already. And I can see at least three different colors down there. So I'm gonna test for lead. And to do that, I'm gonna need some help because I can't see red. Well, I tested for lead and it does not contain lead. So the next thing I'm gonna do is use this Jasco Premium Paint and Epoxy Remover. Uh, I'm gonna do that outside. Well, this step certainly isn't necessary if your door is not in very bad shape or you want it to look, have it that look, kind of shabby chic. All right, I'm gonna let it do its thing and go have some lunch. About a half an hour has passed. As you can see, it's bubbled up real good. Stripping furniture is a messy job. There's no doubt about it. This is the part I was particularly interested in getting out. For that, I'm going to use some of my dollar store brushes. I think you get three for a dollar, so these are going to be thrown away. This is a steel one I have right here. So it's just more of this, kind of boring. This is after the second coat. I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't have to go down to bare wood. It says you can rinse this with water. So while I'm waiting for this one to loosen up, I've got about five more minutes on it, I'm gonna do exactly that. I don't wanna put a whole lot of water on it, but I do wanna um, get rid of that residue. On these flat parts, I'll be using my Restore. I've done quite a bit since the last video. I trimmed up these panels. They were uh, just roughly sawn with a circular saw. So I've squared them up on the table saw. You gotta remember one edge here, the front edge has a slight taper to it, slant because of the uh, way the doors work. So now they're square. Uh, I painted them, I sanded them a little bit, and I carefully marked the inside because you certainly want a left and a right. I have this and a top and a bottom. I have this uh, piece of pegboard here I'm going to use to drill some holes because I'm going to use these little braces, brackets here, for the shelves. Now, these are on one inch centers. You certainly don't need a hole every inch. I'm going to, I don't think, I'm going to put a hole every two inches. And I'm going to start about a foot from the bottom and I'm going to end a little less than a foot from the bottom and end about six or eight inches from the top. So this is the inside. This is the back front. This is the back. This is the inside right. So I've got this marked inside, this side up for inside left. So that means I need to flip it over. I've got the bottom marked on both sides. I've got the top marked on both sides. And now this piece of pegboard is exactly the same size as the shelf. So all I need to do here is square it up really carefully, indexing it on the back here more than the front, but it is exactly the same size. I'm really happy with that. 
have a quarter inch brad point bit and I want to secure this on here because I don't want any movement in it when I'm drilling. So I'm going to secure it with these little screws and I need to find the center because if I were just to screw that into the center, um, I'm going to screw it into a center of a hole, it could throw off the drill bit. So I'm going to insert the drill. give it a little tap so I can find the center of that hole and I'll do it up here as well I'm gonna put three screws in it right now that should be plenty now I can take this screw and put it right where that little divot is and secure that one up here so that's not going anywhere put the drill bit in I did not know this until the other day when I was watching a video and I'm sorry I don't remember who told me but I've always had trouble with these with the chucks on my rigid drills you've got to put it in and then click it back that little click, that secures it. Now that I have all the holes drilled I can drill, I can use one of these brackets as a holder a couple of them here. Go ahead and take that screw out. Drill that hole. That should work. Getting close to some assembly. I've got the top and the bottom all rounded off. Spent some time sanding that. I've routed the ends here. Even though they are uh, in grain, it'll be painted and I don't think it'll show much. Uh, so the top and the bottom are ready. The sides here have a couple of coats of paint on them because it's so much easier to paint them now than afterwards. But there's one thing I want to do before I assemble. Right now, these holes are very difficult to put a, a, a shelf bracket in. So I've got a little, uh, they have fuzzies in there, they got some paint in there. I've got a quarter inch round uh, piece of steel here that I keep for this purpose. And I just clean up the hole like that. And once that's cleaned up, it's a lot easier to insert the side brackets. Without that, I'm going to see my wife struggling where she wants to put these. It's never a good thing to see your wife struggle. Some of these holes are tighter than others. So now it is time for some assembly. When I set these boards up and put them against the bullnose here, they just didn't look right. They came over and made a little shallow shadow line. So I took them back to the table saw and trimmed off a, a little more than an eighth of an inch and brought them back over. I like the way they look now. I've got them clamped on both ends. I've got these two rulers clamped together to check for square. And after a couple of bumps with my dead blow, they are exactly square. I need to put a rabbit in the back side here but I can't do that with them assembled like this. So what I'm gonna do is screw them together temporarily so I can flip it over and put that rabbit on uh, just deep enough 
for the plywood to fit in the back. Look at the top of the shelf here. I need to hide the screws that are up here and I'm gonna be using a 3 8 inch dowel for that. So I'm gonna use a Forstner bit and drill a very clean 3 8 inch hole about right here so I can go ahead and screw that in. I wanna put a little bit higher. The inside here is in grain and screws do not hold very well in end grain. So in here, I'm going to be putting a uh, Miller dowel. I love these things, they really hold well. If you go picking this bookcase up, even to move it out to plug in something, there's gonna be a lot of weight in here. And if you pick up the front, that screw is likely not to hold. So long story short, I don't need to pre-drill here because the Miller dowel We'll hide it. A couple of months ago, I needed to get free shipping and uh, I had been wanting one of these for a long time. So it was just enough to push me over the line to get free shipping. It's a corner chisel. I've never used it. Push it in the corner. Give it a couple of whacks. I don't think I hit it hard enough. I bought these bun feet at Lowe's. I bought the T-nuts at Home Depot. At Lowe's, they were $1.19 a piece. Home Depot, four for $1.36. They're 5 sixteenths. I'm gonna cut a very shallow hole here. So these take a 3 8 inch hole. And I've got my little flag on here again because I don't want to go through the bottom of this. Get, that'll go in there. And this will go in here. Just like that. Well, I've got the feet on and I've disassembled it. Grandkids are playing upstairs, so you're hearing that running. I put some painter's tape here where the glue's gonna go. I've got them cleaned up here, and so I'm gonna prime them with this kilts again. And today I'm gonna use a roller. Enjoy some music and this pitter patter of grandkids' feet above me. Primer's on, I sanded everything down with 220. I think we're ready for some glue up. I have these screws protruding just a little bit because I want to make sure they match up exactly with these holes.
Getting down to the nitty gritty, I've got the first primer coat of paint on here. I have sanded it down to 220, so it's time to cut the shelves. I've put the brackets in here, and I've got the same setup as I had when I checked for a square. And so I'm gonna put those on there and adjust them until they are just a little bit loose. And then make sure the thing is square, and there it is. So instead of taking a chance on mismarking this, I will simply make sure that I've got this on here. Make a little tick mark right there to bring that across. Once those shelves were cut, there was nothing left to do but paint. And you've seen me paint enough. So here they are attached to the wall here so they can't tip over if someone wants to climb up here and try to get to the markers. They're up here for a reason. We have an almost two-year-old in the house and markers are her favorite medium. In this new home, I think it looks good here and it certainly has more shelf space than the old one. So if you have an old door hanging around, go for it. Thanks for watching.